Hi, Colorblind Architect here, and it's really exciting that we have ARCHICAD 27 coming very, very soon. But one of the comments and one of the frequent requests I've gotten from Gerard, um, thank you for continually asking me about that, is how to do electrical load calculations in ARCHICAD. Now, in thinking about ARCHICAD 27 and the fact that there information that Graphisoft has provided has suggested that ARCHICAD 27 is going to dramatically improve some of the MEP elements within ARCHICAD, but I highly doubt that they're going to actually have electrical load calculations built in. And part of the reason why is because I think electrical load calculations, they're going to be specific to each country. And even beyond that, it's going to be specific to each jurisdiction. So for example, I'm in Utah, so we have the Utah Building Code 2021, that is the current code, and that is what I'm going to be building on uh, for most of my project. Now, I also do projects in California and some other places, but honestly, Utah's going to be the bulk of my work. My point in bringing this up is your local jurisdiction is going to designate which code you're going to be doing your calculations by. Even though your electrical load calculations might be very similar you know depending on where you are in the world it might be almost exactly like the way I'm going to be showing it here but you do need to review your own code and your own local jurisdiction requirements to make sure that you're doing it in the right way now I've worked up a methodology as you can see here on this screen you can see this particular uh, electrical load schedule and I'm just gonna move it over here just so it's a little bit easier to see but the idea is to have a load schedule that will not only take into account the square footage of the building in this case this is a single-family residence that we're gonna be doing and we want the single-family residence to automatically calculate based on square footage because the the NEC 2020 which is the current electrical code for Utah again your mileage may vary it says 3 volt amps yes 3 volt amps per square foot so that means on a 1000 square foot residence you're going to be looking at 3000 volt amps that you need to provide. But then, in addition to do your, doing your square footage calculation, you also need to provide for point loads that are specific electrical loads. This would be stuff like your washer and your dryer, and even your washer and dryer, depending on how many you have, that may actually factor into how much you actually um, reduce that load. And then there's also your appliance loads for um, your kitchen counter. So here in the United States, um, we have a requirement for a certain number of outlets on the kitchen counter because it's assumed that you're going to have things like toasters and you know portable, uh, you know maybe toaster ovens. You might have blenders. You might have mixers. You might have um, what are those things? Air fryers. Yeah. If by the way. I don't know how common these air fryers are in other countries, but if you're in another country, definitely comment down below. I'd love to know, but I love my air fryer. It's great. I used to deep fry things like french fries um, or um, chicken nuggets or, or various other delectable fried foods that, of course, are bad for me, but used to do it deep frying ever since we've gotten the air fryer. Oh my goodness, it's so much easier, cleaner, and it's also healthier. So, by the way, you definitely need an air fryer. But, again, that load has to be calculated in your electrical load calculations for a house that you're designing. So, then you also are going to have your electric range, your oven, your kitchen hood, you're going to have your refrigerator, you're going to have your air conditioner, there are so many different elements that you need to calculate. So the whole point of this 
is that we need to be able to put together the load and then we need to also calculate what that load is going to be so we know how many amps to provide. In the case of the United States most often we're providing about 125 amps for a single family home which is kind of the standard uh, currently. Sometimes you need a 200 amp service and sometimes you need a 400 amp service and in the case of Park City, Utah and by the way if you don't know Park City, Utah but if you know anything about skiing it is the home to mega billionaires that um, yeah they might be living all over the world but they all have these mega mansion billionaire homes up in Park City, Utah and sometimes these are like 15,000 20,000 square foot homes now I've only designed a couple of them because these contracts are pretty hard to get and um, it's not something that I actually market towards but the point is is that um, in Summit County Utah you are actually required to provide an electrical load calculation on single-family homes because a lot of these homes are coming in over 400 amps because they'll have things like swimming pools jacuzzi spas they'll have um, saunas electric saunas a lot of times they'll have all their electric vehicles charging they'll have bowling alleys they'll have golf simulators and giant movie screens and projectors they'll have all they'll have like multiple kitchens with multiple you know um, with multiple sub-zero wolf appliances I mean these things are just monstrosities of so-called homes they're not actually homes they're a commercial building that is in the shape of a home but just a lot bigger now most of the homes that we're designing are going to be pretty small we're talking one to three thousand square feet right you know they, just your average american home and i recognize outside of the united states yeah you're probably going to have even smaller homes but the point is, is that occasionally as architects we need to be able to do this and even if you're just an electrical engineer watching this I'm hoping that this is going to be helpful so that you can know how to do this now the point of this introduction is to point out the fact that in the case of this electrical load calculation I've factored in the square footage and also the point loads now you might be wondering how in the world do you do that how in the world can you schedule multiple items and be able to drill down to the detail of the electrical loads for these different items well let's get started now I am going to credit my electrical engineer that I work with um, Scott Jenkins with Wasatch Engineering he's been great to provide me a template of an accessory dwelling unit project that we did together um, where it's a very simple load schedule this probably took them maybe 30 minutes to put together but it is in an Excel spreadsheet and as you can see we've got the um, we've got our general lighting and general use receptacles at the 3 volt amps per square foot and then we also have our small appliance circuits so this is going to be the kitchen counters the um, you know like I mentioned the air fryer uh, the laundry circuit now the laundry circuit is typically referring to the clothes washer not the clothes dryer the clothes dryer is usually going to take a much larger electrical load unless you're using a natural gas electric or a, a natural gas power dryer but those are pretty rare most American homes have gone electric on dryers and I'm assuming in most parts of the world you're probably using an electric clothes dryer as well just not as big and bulky as the ones that we use here in America because of course this is America everything's bigger when it comes to our homes our electrical appliances um, and then of course also range range hood um, garbage disposal I now again this is another thing that I don't know if you're outside in the United States if you use garbage disposals much Oh, they are glorious and wonderful but it is an electric load that is in addition to the 3 volt amperes per square foot and then 
we've got the refrigerator, the dishwasher, um, and you might have a card charging station. And again, if you're in a bigger home, bowling alley, you know, all those fun little things that maybe other people don't have. Your bathroom exhaust fans and your HVAC. Now, so how do we do this in Archicad? Now, what I've produced here is a sample floor plan of a single floor of a home. Now, this is just a really basic design. This is not a this is actually not an actual project that I'm working on it's just it has a kitchen it's got a living room I an office study a laundry room it's got the front entry foyer it's got a couple bedrooms with a Jack and Jill be bathroom with a bathroom exhaust fan so this this would be a fairly typical small American home in fact this is probably smaller than your typical American home but just for sake of this argument we are going to use that now the first thing that we need to do to create this electric load schedule is we're going to need to go to the options and property manager because in order to have both electrical outlets and also square footage calculations be able to work together we need to have some parameters that not only take care of the um, that they not first they they need to not only take care of the two different elements and being able to combine them but we also need to be able to perf uh, perform some calculations so to perform the calculations we're going to scroll on down in our properties dialog and you'll notice in the zones category this is where I like to put it just because um, this is already keyed to zones so I'm going to go ahead and add a new property and on this property I'm gonna call this electric load types and for this electric load types instead of a string I'm going to say an option set because what I want to do is I want to take that I want to take that uh, Excel spreadsheet that we use that we saw earlier and I'm going to go ahead and type in our you know various items so the first one is going to be um, SFR for single family home general okay so I want to try to keep the terms pretty simple so in this one I'm calling it SFR I'm actually going to change it to just SFR for single family residential that's just our general square footage measurement our next items are going to be the different loads so we're gonna have the refrigerator and then we're gonna have clothes dryer uh, general laundry no we're gonna say laundry circuit that's for our washing machine and then we're gonna have bathroom fan kitchen counter and then we're gonna have oven range and by the way I'm putting that in there because in this example case that I've designed I've got a separate wall oven from a stove and so that stove um, if it is a natural gas stove you're you're probably gonna have a pretty light load but you still want to calculate it and if it is an electric stove then you're definitely going to want to calculate that as a separate item um, and then we're also going to have in here um, garbage disposal dishwasher and then so we've got the small appliance circuit which is our kitchen counter we've got our laundry we've got our range oh yes we need a range hood and then our air conditioning or HVAC okay so now that we've got that we need to apply values to those so the way we're going to be taking care of that is we're going to be doing another parameter this parameter is going to be 
electric load amounts no electric loads so let's just call it electric loads and this one is actually going to be an expression okay now in the expression we're going to go to our functions and on our logical functions we're going to do an ifs or ifs statement okay the reason for this is the if statement allows us to basically have a long string of different um, options and whatever tr whatever option is true for the partic per particular parameter that we are calling for then it gives us that result so to simplify this let's just go ahead and get started first we're gonna say um, parameters and properties and we're gonna go down to properties zones and we're gonna say electric load types add and then if electric load types space equals space and then because the option set um, is full of uh, ASCII key uh, key strings so this would basically mean that it's a bunch of letters so we've basically given them names um, they need to be in quotes so that if we say SFR our CAD knows oh okay this is a string not a not an, not a calculation or a parameter so SFR that's the name of that particular item and then what we're gonna do is under the value we're going to put three for three volt amperes okay and then we're going to repeat that process and the nice thing is once we have that um, parameter in there we can say electric load types and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put equals dishwasher for example oh yes and we need to put the quotes because this is a string and then for the value we're gonna go back to our um, example and for this one we're gonna say dishwasher okay this particular one was an, an 1100 volt ampere dishwasher so for that dishwasher we're just gonna go ahead and put in 1100 now according to the code the way that we're supposed to do this is the volt amperes that we put on the load specific like the specific appliance or de specific device items is we're supposed to go with the plate tag the nameplate tag that each device has now if you're looking at a uh, if you're looking at an air conditioner or a washing machine or a, or a dishwasher all of these have what's called a nameplate and these nameplates will say the model number the serial number blah 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 part of it will also say what the electrical requirements are and on there it will say how many volt amperes it pulls this is the number that you need to pull there there are ways to do an estimate and you can go off of kind of like some code default numbers but for right now I'm just going to use this nameplate number now I'm I'm going to stop here just be well actually let's just add one more and we're gonna say disposal and this one we're going to put in 1176 which is very specific but again I think that was because it was a specific uh, disposal that we were using on that specific project but the reason why I want to stop here is just to keep it simple um, so that we can go through this I'll I'll fix this up later now uh, it looks like we have an error so let's just double check our uh, let's just go double check our numbers so we've got dishwasher okay so the issue here is that we had the data type as a string and what we really need is an integer you could go number but then with the number you're gonna have to use the roundup function to uh, or you know to bring it to the nearest 
uh, zero decimal. It's a lot easier if we just say integer because the integer has no decimal points. So, um, and then we'll leave the expression that eliminated the error. So that's good. We can move on. So now we're gonna go. So now we're gonna go ahead and la add electrical nameplate load. Now you might have noticed that in the electric loads I have some default ones in there and the reason for that is because sometimes for the sake of your template you just want to be able to move quickly and it's just a lot easier to have some ones that are just automatically defaulted in there but you may have an issue where you need to actually manually put in a separate um, you know load per the nameplate so I created this separate parameter, this separate property class in order to allow you to type in a number here. Now leave this one zero in the default value. Notice this is default value and that will, that will become important later. Our next property that we need to create is going to be electric, electric NEC reference. Now the reason why I'm creating a separate pro uh, property for this is in that load table so that the schedule can look right, right off the bat, I wanted to be able to include the reference to the code so that any reviewer reviewing the load calc, they can see, oh, okay, this is where uh, this is where these numbers, this calculation method is being pulled from. So we're going to go ahead and add this and this one is actually going to be a string parameter and we're going to create an expression now I've already created this one from another uh, from another project but it's different properties so I'm gonna need to update the properties so for the SFR property I'm going to go ahead and choose our properties zones electric load types add and then we're going to go ahead and replace all these missing properties with the electric load types. Okay. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that I have the right values in there. So. Um, before we can continue, I'm going to go back to the electric load types and we're going to go to our options set and just to make it simpler, we're going to go ahead and use the snipping tool and we're going to go ahead and select that and now that we've done that, we've got this handy little guide here. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. That way we can reference it while we're editing this because honestly it gets really hard to remember everything exactly as it was so let's just make sure that we're not making these mistakes. Okay so electric load types we've got that loaded in so we've got SFR we've got range okay and then we've got range hood and then disposal we've got clothes dryer we've got refrigerator we've got dishwasher small appliance circuit so we're gonna change this one because in this project we called it kitchen counter okay and then by the way on um, okay and then we're going to go down to uh, so we've got laundry circuit and bathroom fan okay and then HVAC now for the sake of this argument we're just gonna show this is how you structure it and then because these are going to be reporting back strings in the 
result for each one, we're going to put that in quotes, what the result needs to be. In this case, it's the actual reference to the chapter section verse of the code where um, these numbers are being pulled from. This last portion of the expression, um, electric load types equals NA um, with a result of zero. The reason for this is because um, what we want to do is when we're going to when we create the schedule we want to be able to have an easy way to filter out everything that does not need to be included for example um, if you look at if we look at the actual kitchen in which we are um, designing you'll notice that we have three outlets on the counter now the code is on an electric on the kitchen counters here in the United States, we need to have the the, the small appliance outlets no more than two feet from any point. So roughly that means about every four feet you'll have an outlet. Now the point is we only need to count this once because it's the fifteen it's the fifteen hundred volt amperes for all the small appliances on the counter. That would be one circuit but in the plan we're going to be showing the three outlets so what we really need is we only need one of these outlets to act as the circuit and the other two to be dummy ones so now what we're going to do is going to we're going to go back into our property manager and then under electric load types under the options set we're going to add an NA option and what that does is on the code references that's now going to allow us to have this result come out at zero and why zero because zero plus zero is zero zero plus one is zero, is one and in other words we don't want it to have an effect on the load calculation our next property is going to be electric VA per square foot now this is kind of a poorly named property but honestly this is really just a workaround um, because what's going to happen is our calculation per square foot is going to be based on zones but our electric point loads are going to be based on objects like the electrical outlets or appliances um, things like that we need a way to unify the two so that they can add up at the end. Okay, so basically what this property does is this is going to allow us to take the um, the measured area times the electrical load, which is the 3VA, and then if that results in nothing, then we have a separate parameter. Okay, so let's first take this calculation and we're going to enter that into this one and then we're gonna change out this one this particular uh, parameter needs to be the electrical loads okay and measured area is fine because that's coming off of the zones okay and then we're going to add another um, an, there's going to be another expression or formula and that one is the electric load per square foot is simply that um, that was the th that was the name that I used on the other project so on this one we're just going to report a parameter of electric load Now, let me explain what's going on here. So in this particular property, um, we're going to have the first calculation, which is the string to number uh, expression. So this is a, um, basically what this is, is we've got a string to number, which is from the formulas, data conversion. So 
string to number or number from string and then inside of that we're gonna have a string cal unit so that's convert unit to string and the reason why is we need to eliminate the square foot or the area unit to the measured area of the zone and convert it into an integer so that it can basically play nice with the other numbers so that's where this string the string calc unit takes the zone square footage and it converts it into a string so basically numbers and letters and then this string to number converts the letters numbers of the string and converts it to an integer then we have the electric loads that is the number of volt amps either from the nameplate load or from the code value for that type of load or from the square footage times the load in this case it's the square footage times the load because what we're trying to get is if we have the 1000 square feet times the 3 volt amps then we get our number now the problem is we're having a little bit of a problem with this particular um, calculation. I think it's because the electric loads is labeled as integer. I'm going to convert that to number and yeah that f that did not fix it. Oh 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 sorry okay we need to go back to electric okay so integer. okay now the other thing to remember is to set this electric VA per square foot to integer. Now the first expression in the sequence is the one that calculates the measure the measurement the measured area of the zone times the three volt amperes into the number of volt amperes for the entire house uh, for those objects that are not zones that have no square footage so I'm talking the electrical outlets or dishwasher refrigerator all that stuff then that is going to be covered by the electric loads and what this whole property does is it takes those two different numbers those two different columns in this in the in the schedule and it makes them one column okay our next parameter is going to be electric load subtotals all right I'm calling it this because what this aims to do is to create the subtotal so this would be the end line of each schedule line item so you know once we've calculated the square footage of the of the house once we've um, calculated the, um, the you know once we've added up the refrigerators dishwashers all that we need to have a way for these numbers to end up at that right end of the schedule so so now we move on to the descriptions so we're going to call this electrical load descriptions and in this one this is actually a string and again we're gonna make this an expression and the reason why we want to make this an expression is because we want these to all be dependent on the electric load types option set so as you're selecting that option set you're not having to do multiple selections these are all dependent um, it does take a bit more work to write this up because as you will see <laughs> this is a very long formula this is another ifs statement and in this case we're going to be going back to our electric load types and then we're going to copy and paste at all these missing properties now the reason why the property is missing is I copied it from another property uh, project and so when you copy it from one project to another it loses that but then what we need to do is we need to go back to our little handy dandy list and we're gonna go through SFR okay range um, range hood disposal clothes dryer just make sure that these are the same exact names refrigerator 
dishwasher um, this one was going to be kitchen counter laundry circuit bathroom bathroom fan HVAC and then finally electric load types and A yields zero because obviously we we don't want to schedule that um, okay so what this basically does is this is creating a string based ifs statement so that whatever the electric load type is um, then in the schedule that will report back and give us a column that we can schedule and it will say okay this is what this is so if it's you know and it's going to be based on the code descriptions of those items okay now I know this is a lot of setup and you're probably thinking what okay now <laughs> let's move on now that we've got these set up now we can actually start building out the schedule which of course if we go to schedules and we go to scheme settings we can then head on over here and we can say new and we're going to call this electrical load schedule okay this is going to be of elements okay now what we're going to want next is we're going to want to limit this to objects and also zones add criteria uh, element type and this is going to be zone okay now before we proceed we want it to be and so what we're going to no actually it needs to be or so the issue here is this is filtering things out so we want to make sure that it's clear that it can be either an object or a zone so we need to ch change this boolean operator to or and we're going to put it in the parentheses because the next statement is going to be a different uh, property and we're going to go down to our properties zones electrical load types and if the electric load types is an A well okay that would include only those that are in a but what we're actually going to do is we're going to change this is not now real quick before we proceed I'm going to click OK and we're going to go back to the properties because this is a very important I just we, we need to go back to our electric load types and under the options set we need to change the default value from SFR to NA now what this does is this is going to mean that unless you tell an object that it is to be included it will not be included in this schedule very important because we we're trying to make this as easy as possible right so let's go back to our scheme settings for the electric load schedule and oops I opened up the schedule itself so now what we're gonna do is we're going to add the parameters so the fields that we want to include first are going to include the NEC reference or the code reference okay and then next we're going to include the load descriptions then we're going to include the actual name of the object now in this case um, actually no it's the name of the zone okay so next what we're gonna do is we're going to include the zone name okay 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to add the measured area okay and then we're going to go back to our properties and we're going to go ahead we're going to add our electric loads and then we're going to say our um, and then our next thing is going to be the load I mean the VA per square foot which like I said that's kind of a poorly named one but um, that should get us everything that we need and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say summation on the final value the VA per square foot and um, that should be good now what we could do is we could also put a flag on the NEC reference because what that will do is then all the it will group all the categories and we'll get subtotals within each okay now as you'll see we do not currently have anything in the schedule so what we need to do is go back to our floor plan and now we need to actually assign things now I have not as of yet created a zone so what we're gonna do is call this first floor and we're going to do this as a polygon and then we're just gonna hold down the spacebar get the magic wand and then place it now what that does is that's going to give us the exact dimensions of the house now what we can do is we can click on the settings dialog and under properties you'll notice that it's not been added so the reason why I left that off was exactly for that purpose so that you can see okay all of these parameters we need to manually add them to the classification sets now the easiest way to do this is to just switch the availability of classifications to all because that way you don't have to worry about it now I know if you're a more expert user and you want to carefully classify this stuff yes go ahead please be more careful with the way that you're setting this up but in my case because this is a single family home and this is relatively simple and I'm the only one working on this I don't really care it's too much work to do more than that so again your use case might be different especially if you're working in a large office with a BIM manager who needs to have specific BIM standards that you're following yes definitely be more careful okay now now that we've done that we should be able to go back into the settings of this zone and we should be able to see it show up oh yes and the problem is we ended up with a label and not the actual room tag um, and I think that's because our our particular display right now is not showing zone stamps so now we're gonna go into our zone and we're gonna go into our classifications and properties so we can just go ahead and so that you guys can actually see this I'm gonna close some of this other stuff Okay, and under the classification and properties you can see we have these electric loads now here and we're going to change this electric load type to SFR instead of the default in A now the great thing is now we're done with the zone because all these expressions that we did the, the painstaking process of creating those expressions now the electric loads NEC reference VA per square foot load descriptions that are going to report into the schedule they're all gonna be there already so we're gonna click OK and now we're gonna go back to our electric load schedule and guess what aha we have numbers showing up and what we get is kind of a messy looking schedule but we're not going to worry about it just yet because we need to add 
the appliances. But the point is, is now we've got the code reference, we've got the description, we've got the zone name, we've got the measured area, we've got the electrical load, so and this is me as measured in per square foot, and then this measured area times the 3VA times square foot equals 4,678 volt amps, okay? This then results in our total. So now we're going to go back to the first floor plan and we're going to start adding some additional elements. So first we're going to take this bathroom fan. Okay, so this exhaust fan is required by code. We're going to go into our properties and same thing, we're going to go into our classifications and properties. I'm going to scroll on down to the zones, go to electric load types, and this one is a bathroom fan. Now we can go back to our electric load table and you'll notice we have an error here. It's not showing the actual load. So this is where we need to go back to our property manager and we're gonna go to our electric loads and this is basically because I kinda cheated. I went short and easy on editing this so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add another load type bathroom fan and then we're going to go back to our template on this one we showed bathroom exhaust fans as 65 VA uh, each so in that we're just going to type in 65 and as you can see now our schedules updated it's added the 65 and one of the things that you'll notice there's no lines in between this it's kind of mm, it's not the best so I think what I'm gonna do is to kinda of pretty this up I'm going to I'm going to say let's show headline and under edit we're gonna insert a separator row before the headlines so and part of what this does is this is gonna give us the ability to schedule so we're gonna change this to the headline being the first two scheduled fields because there's no reason to repeat the information of the description on every single line item so let's say there's like four different bathrooms and therefore there's four exhaust fans well rather than having that show up multiple times we can just go ahead and show it once and now just to clean this up we're gonna go ahead and just add that now the other thing you'll see is that because we did that now we've got um, now we've got some space. I'm also going to clean this up a little bit and change this so that it just shows horizontal lines in between just because it makes it look a little bit nicer. Okay, go through the different line types. Okay, yeah, so now we're looking a little bit better. Let's add a little more space there. I'm going to go and change this to centered and this one centered this one centered okay and so now we've got the code reference the description we've got the item there um, okay now you'll notice it's not showing what this load type is you know for the bathroom fan so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go back in we're gonna add an additional field and we're going to go down to our electric load types under the properties zones as we did and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one up to load types and click OK and what that will do is it will add the bathroom fan to that so that's helpful we can also update the titles 
local load type. I'm going to change this to area. And change that to zone. I'm going to say electric loads in volt amperes per square feet or okay. okay and that's just to clarify that this is what unit this is in and then this one I'm going to say subtotal okay so now we've got our subtotals of each code reference let's add the header text to pre I think this will be a little bit more clean so that it's clear where those subtotals are and unfortunately it's not letting us create a subtotal line you know a, a separator between the subtotal and the grand total but that's okay now let's add a couple more objects so we're going to go ahead and take the fridge and even though I'm showing this on the floor plan as a range this one is going to be a stove but for the purposes of this load type we're going to call this a stove a range okay now if you remember I said we're only going to take one of the kitchen counter outlets to change that into the circuit for our kitchen counter the others will leave as default okay and now we're going to go to our washer and this one's going to be the laundry circuit the clothes dryer and now we're going to take this outlet that's showing here as the disposal and we're going to go ahead and change that one to disposal okay now we've got all the loads added in obviously we need to make some adjustments to our schedule okay now what you'll see is we have a few items that need to be updated in here so let's go back to and by the way let's for the sake of you being able to see I, you know I I apologize I keep forgetting that because I've got this big huge 4k screen and you're looking at a little YouTube screen okay now let's go to let's go back to our pro uh, properties so that we cor co correct these undefined amounts so we're gonna go back to property manager and under this we're gonna go to our electric loads and we're going to edit this okay now to make things easier we're gonna go back to our options setup we're gonna copy the electric load types parameter there and this one is going to be so let's see we've got SFR we've got dishwasher we've got disposal we need refrigerator And for right now, um, oh yeah, let me pull this one up. Okay, so for our refrigerator, we're going to pop that in at 1100. And then our next one is going to be clothes dryer. This one should be a much bigger load. Yes, 7280. And now I'm just going to go ahead and type this in, fast forward, and we'll finish this up in a moment.
OK, now I've entered in the values and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now you can see those values have been updated. Now here's the next test. We're going to go ahead and add an air conditioning unit. Now in this case I did not provide a mechanical closet because on this house it's small enough that I'm just going to do a ductless mini split. So for the ductless mini split I'm going to go ahead and go to um, my HVAC category. I'm going to go ahead and add some wall mounted air conditioners. Okay. Now, in this case, I'm going to use these kind of around. Okay. Now that I've added that, I'm going to add a uh, compressor for the ductless mini splits. Okay, we've added the compressor, and now in this case, if we have four of these units all going at the same time, um, what's interesting about this is in the code, it actually allows you to do a reduction um, per the number of appliances, but we're not going to get into the complexity of that just yet. What we're going to do is instead, we're going to take our electric load types for this, we're going to say... Um, HVAC, but because these are not the 12 300 that this particular one is, in fact, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull up a sample ductless mini split unit off of the internet. Um, let's hope that this website actually shows the electrical data because my guess is it's probably only going to show the voltage, that it's single phase. It's probably not going to bother giving us the actual load um, or the nameplate value. So, um, you know what? I'm just going to guess. Let's say this is 8,000 volt amps. So, let's go ahead and put that in OK. Now, the reason why I manually put that one in was so that you can see that this is not working yet it's reporting the wrong number so what we need to do is we need to go back to our property manager and if our nameplate is here then what we need to do is our we need to have a place where the nameplate value gets added in so on this volt amps per um, thing so what we're going to do is before we before this electric loads, we're gonna put in a parameter for if, and then the logical we're going to put we're gonna go down to properties zones and then if nameplate load equals oh sorry so if nameplate load equals zero then electric loads value of false is going to be nameplate load. What this basically does is this means that if our nameplate load is zero, that means we did not met, we did not custom add that in. So to go with the default set into your template. But if not, if it's not zero, then override it with the custom value that you added. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click OK and that did not fix it. 
So this is where we actually needed an extra parameter, um, or an extra property, I should say. So I do apologize. That is, oh no, that's because we need to do that. Okay. Okay. We will see if this works. No, it did not. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Okay, now to fix this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to create another another property, and this one is going to be called um, electrical load per square foot no we're gonna call we're gonna call this one call electrical load sub total okay now the purpose of this parameter and we make sure we add it for all classifications is we're going to take the expression that we did here Okay, and then on this one, we're going to remove these, and that way, hopefully, nope, that did not fix it. We are getting very long on this video. Okay, now as you can see, this gets a little bit complicated, so um, the electrical load subtotal needs to be the nameplate load first. If not, then that's going to be the electric loads. If so, then the nameplate load, right? But then we get rid of this. Then what we do is we will go back here to our schedule and then we're going to edit the scheme settings and instead of electric loads which we're going to remove we're going to add electric load subtotal which that is going to combine the var values and there you go so we get the load Okay. Now what now what we're going to see is the air conditioning units which we put in a custom value now are showing the 8000 instead of the prior value. So let's go back to this and let's let's take two of these and put them back to zero just to show you what that actually did so if we put those back at zero then it goes back to the default amount as described by the other settings now what does all this do we get this schedule and now we need to actually have something to show for it now um, in this case I'm gonna go ahead and do alt F7 um, actually no it's not letting me do that so I'm going to take the load schedule copy this over onto this sheet and now as you can see we have the load schedule but this is the total but we don't actually have any of the reduction values and unfortunately the the total as done by the schedule is not going to actually allow us to calculate those reductions so this is where we need to go back into Excel and so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our schedule we're gonna go to file save as and then we're gonna choose XLS and we're going to go onto our desktop for right now just to make it easy I'm gonna hit save okay this saves this schedule out into a format that we can then 
take our Excel spreadsheet and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to data and this is Microsoft Excel you can use other spreadsheets but I use Excel because I think Excel is way better I like it a lot better so, and then we're gonna click on get data from file from Excel workbook and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on desktop and choose the electrical load schedule so that's the one from ArchiCAD and that's going to open up another tab. Now this tab, the reason why you want to do this is because as changes occur in the building, you don't want to have your, uh, you don't want to have the Excel spreadsheet that ArchiCAD produces be the one that you're doing the calculations with. Instead, you want to have a separate, um, a, you know, a linked tab so and so in this case this particular tab is fully linked these totals are produced by the spreadsheet that we produced in ArchiCAD that way if we make some changes in ArchiCAD and we need to update the schedule we can save out a new XLS from the spreadsheet I mean from the schedule into the same file name as before and then when we go back in here, we can actually refresh this one using the refresh button, which will actually update this from here. Now, take note of this. This is the F36, no, F37 cell. This is what we want for our information. We're going to go to our template. And in this particular case, I'm just using the template to make it easy but what we're really looking for is the total general load right here and this number is the one that we need to edit so what we're gonna do is just so that these are kind of separate I'm gonna copy and paste just so that it's out of the way okay and then I'm gonna do the same thing here but as you'll notice all these numbers are calculations so nothing is going to be showing because we've separated it from these totals so what we need to do is we need to take this cell right here the general load and instead of this sum here we're going to say equals and then we're going to click on this tab where we have the linked information and we're going to select the cell from ArchiCAD that produced our total and we're going to hit enter what that does is that then ins puts this into the general load and then this next cell this is calculating the first 10 kilovolt amperes of general load at a hundred percent so that takes uh, that takes an if statement of the I 37 which is our general load total and if less than 10,000 and then if uh, and then if not then so you know continue then the next one is going to be a similar if statement and that will take the remainder at 40 percent so this is your load reduction so the first 10,000 of the 83,599 is going to be 100 percent so that's 10,000 percent you know 10,000 um kva or 10 kva then the rest is going to be the 40 percent number of what's left which would be the 73,599 at 40 percent that's 29,440 so then our reduced general load we then take the sum of the two which is the two of these together 39,440 and then you can add in the total mechanical load now the total mechanical load this is going to be equals and we're going to go back to the electrical load schedule and this is why we needed to put that flag on the um, the the parameter for the electrical code reference so that we're getting this unified um, this unified subtotal of that specific category 
in this case the heating cooling load the subtotal of that is this number right here the 49,200 and that produces this net computed load in KVA which is 89 KVA and then the net computed load in amps which is basically you know times 1000 now I know what you're thinking Dave you did this wrong exactly because look at this for this tiny little house we have 369 amps which is ridiculous it is absolutely ridiculous now the reason why I purposely did this wrong was to show why this is not the way to do this <laughs> because what I did is I added in all the air conditioning units now if you look really carefully at what it says it actually says largest heating cooling load this is where we should have gone back to our first floor plan and we're gonna take all of these And we're going to change these back to NA. And here's the reason why. Realistically, these are all just one system. So we're going to take the condenser instead. We're going to change that to HVAC. And now we're going to go back to our load schedule. Now you can see we only have one HVAC line item we're going to go ahead and go to our save as and we're going to go ahead and save it in the same location the desktop as an XLS spreadsheet and actually we saved it as an X SL XLS X replace that file and now we're going to go to our Excel spreadsheet we're going to go back to our load schedule and under data we're gonna refresh all and voila it updated it. but here's the problem <laughs> it updated it and changed the positions of those so we actually lost three lines so let's just remember that as we go back into here we need to change this number um, To this one and we need to change this number to this one and now we get a more realistic number it's still crazy huge but it's at least more realistic now how do we get this back into ARCHICAD we're gonna go ahead and copy these cells only and then we're going to go to our layout and I'm going to go ahead and do a single figure and now you can see we've got that bit of the spreadsheet in here now you can actually do this more complicated and do like a uh, you know a, a different type of import the important thing is getting these this number in here so that the calculation is in now let me clarify this again I am not an electrical engineer this is not what I do on a regular basis I am showing this for an example of how you can do it I highly recommend you actually know what you're doing and that you know the math and you know how to do it per code um, I am certain that I did this wrong but this at least illustrates how you can do it now with that said hopefully this has been helpful and I am offering this for free just because you know I I find this kind of stuff really interesting and hopefully it's helpful to you um, I would love to see your guys's responses if you've got um, if you've got your own version of this that you've put together, 
I'd love to see um, examples maybe uh, you know sh maybe share them uh, maybe we can make a community and help improve everybody's lives by getting this to work um, you know granted I'm showing you this from the stock vanilla version of the template from our uh, from Graphisoft because I wanted to show you how to set it up from scratch because this is something that you're gonna want to set up in your template not my template not not anybody else's template this needs to be your template because as you can see that there's a good bit of setup so do this yourself in yours and make sure it actually matches your code for your area you could obviously make this a lot more complicated a lot more robust of a system um, this is just a very simple uh, example of how you can do it and again with that thank you for joining me I'm the colorblind architect peace out